Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, could United Technologies and Sikorsky Aircraft head in different directions? Expedition Crew 42 returns from the International Space Station. And commercial use of a UAV once again it gets a weird FAA reaction. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. United Technologies Board of Directors has authorized a review of strategic alternatives for the corporation's Sikorsky aircraft business, including a potential tax-free spinoff. As part of a portfolio review announced last December, it was decided to look into the possibility of UTC and Sikorsky becoming separate companies. UTC President and Chief Executive Officer Gregory Hayes said that they are, quote, evaluating whether Sikorsky's unique business as a rotorcraft OEM with a predominantly military customer base is best positioned as a standalone company, and whether a separation would allow United Technologies to better focus on providing high technology systems and services to the aerospace and building industries, end quote. UTC expects to include its strategic review before the end of the year. However, no specific timetable has been set, and there can be no assurance that a spinoff or any other transaction will take place. Three crew members from Expedition 42, consisting of Commander Barry Wilmore of NASA and two Russian flight engineers, returned to Earth last Wednesday after a 167-day mission on the International Space Station that included hundreds of scientific experiments and several spacewalks. During their mission, the crew members participated in a variety of research focusing on the effects of microgravity on cells, Earth observation, physical science, and biological and molecular science. One of several key research focus areas during Expedition 42 was human health management for long-duration space travel. Wilmore ventured outside the space station on three spacewalks to prepare for new international docking adapters and future U.S. commercial crew spacecraft. Wilmore also completed a spacewalk in October to replace a failed voltage regulator. After the break, the FAA overstepped its authority again. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The FAA has told a UAV pilot in Maine to take down a personal website because he was selling photographs he had taken using his small UAV. According to the FAA, that's a commercial use and is prohibited. The weird thing in this story is that he was told not only to stop commercial use of the UAV, but that he had to take down his entire website. Steve Gerard is a pilot and photographer. He said he took some pictures of areas near his house with his UAV and posted them on a website. Some people liked the photos, and Gerard said he sold a couple of them for $2 each. Gerard said he has stopped selling his photographs on the website, but he will not take it down. He's added that he's tried to communicate with the FAA, but when he called, he sat on hold for 40 minutes and that his emails asking for documentation of the rules have not been returned. 
It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN's CEO and Editor-in-Chief, Jim Campbell, to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim says it's about time to have some straight talk about UAV hysteria. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley. Hi, folks. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Well, at least it is if you look at USA Today or some of the other dribble that's been out there in various papers, trying to cover the UAV industry. First of all, every time you turn around, it seems like there's another UAV trying to ram grandma's airliner or scare somebody's cows, or for that matter, being blamed for everything but the Lindbergh baby kidnapping. And the only reason they're not going to be able to get away with that is, well, there weren't UAVs back then. But I'll bet sooner or later somebody tries. Uh, on the media side of things, it's out of control. They don't know what these things will do. They don't understand them, but they sure as hell like to cover them. Well, it's up to us as an industry to, one, embrace the reality of what these things can do, to be as forthcoming as we can about the realistic issues and concerns that we have as an aerospace and aviation industry, and more important than anything else, when we see bad coverage, to contact the people involved, explain where they've gone wrong, and more important than anything else, in our operations, whether we're a hobbyist or if we're doing light commercial operations or what have you, uh, either under an exemption or <laughs> working our way up to these things as the uh, NPRM comes about, well, let's behave. Let's be on our best behavior. If we're anywhere near an airport, for God's sakes, make sure that you're in contact with those people, that you've got permission, or that you're operating in a way that's going to be allowed under the FARs as they stand for the moment. And at the same time, let's try to build understanding. If we are reaching out to these people, drop on by, show them the devices, show them how you control it, show them what you're trying to do, and most important, be an ambassador for the future. I can't tell you what's going to happen to these things. What I can tell you is what I have seen from the technology, what I've seen from going to the AUVSI convention, what I've seen from the operators, what I've seen from operating these things myself, is the potential is virtually unlimited. Not just for what they can do, but for the technology they may ultimately wind up in your LSA, in your GA, in your BizAV, in your sport aviation, whatever the case may be, these things can realistically change aviation and aerospace. And if they haven't already to a certain extent, they sure will in very short order. We have tremendous potential here. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's be very forthcoming in what we're doing. Let's make sure that inaccurate reporting gets a call from us to try to calm things down. And most important, in everything we do, if we're operating or we working with operators, whatever the case may be, let's be on our best behavior. The future is ours. The question is, is it going to be a convoluted, overregulated, difficult, complex future? Or are these things going to be allowed to change our future for the better? Up to us. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. After these messages, airline travel is forecast to hit a high. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The organization Airlines for America released its 2015 Spring Air Travel Forecast and 2014 results for U.S. passenger airlines which delivered another year of strong operational performance and modest profitability. The 2015 air travel 
is expected to set a seven-year high. The Veterans Administration approves veterans to be reimbursed for attending MBAA's Certified Aviation Manager Program. The CAM program is recognized as a career path for veterans and falls under the GI Bill education benefits. DARPA has awarded three contracts for its Air Crew Labor and Cockpit Automation System Program, known as ALIAS. This study will enable high levels of automation in existing aircraft and facilitate reduced need for an onboard crew. We're not sure if this is good news or bad news. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. Boeing's Randy Tenseth announced that Boeing is planning some improvements for their 777 series of aircraft at the iStat Americas conference in Arizona this week. Tenseth wrote on his blog on the Boeing website that baseline engine airplane weight and aerodynamic improvements will be phased into production by the third quarter of 2016, lowering trip fuel use by 2%. Combine that with priced optional features and airlines will see an approximate 5% overall fuel use per seat improvement. Tenseth said that the plane maker will offer a combination of various GE90 engine improvements by GE, optimized interior structural crown architecture, low density hydraulic fluid, lightweight insulation, and tail skid removal will result in a 1200 pound weight reduction. Tenseth added that the company is also considering retrofit opportunities for in-service airplanes, and GE is considering an engine retrofit package. Well, that's our program for Friday, March 13th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday. Join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.